Uh, but before I read, just want to remind you, according to a Shafi'i school, since we're talking about the contractor, the dealer, according to the Shafi'i school, you can't do a deal with the machine. I don't know if any school says you can do a deal with the machine because it's not a contractor. It doesn't have mind. It's not accountable. doesn't have an intention. can't say statements, etc. cetera. Uh, but according to the Hanafis, we can deal with the kuffar the way they deal if we get the advantage. So fundamentally, you want to avoid doing self-checkout Unless there's a person there. Yani, how can you deal with a machine? How do you actually deal with the machine? Uh, you deal with the machine by, I'm talking about in Shafiri school, by not really dealing with the machine, but dealing with the person. So let's say, for example, there's a potato chip machine or a soda machine or a bubble gum dispenser. So it's not valid fundamentally just to put your money in there and then press the button or turn the knob and then take something. But it would be valid. Let's say you have a barbershop and there's bubblegum machine in there. So it is valid to say to the authorized person, like the owner of the shop, Yanni, or one of his workers, for example, it is valid to say to him, I'm going to put this quarter in your machine and take the bubblegum out. And he says, okay. And then you put the quarter and then twist the knob and take the gum. That's valid sale because you really did it with a human. And like that for any machine, any vending machine or something like that, or washing machine or anything like that. So fundamentally, that's how you're going to deal with the machine. Deal using a machine, I mean. Uh, but the Hanafis said that you can deal with the kuffar in their land, yani the kafir in his country, as he deals. If you, as a Muslim, get the advantage, as long as the advantage is yours as the Muslim, not the disadvantage. An example of getting the advantage that I asked about, I said, uh, my question was just to check my understanding. I asked a question to check my understanding. So my question was, okay. Yeah. So my question was, uh, so if I were to, yeah, and if I want to do my laundry, if I want to do my laundry, then I have options. One of those options is to do it myself. I can wash my laundry with my own hands. Another option is to hire someone to do it for me. Another option is to go to the laundromat and they have these automated machines in there. Another option is to go to the laundromat and they have machines in there. Now, fundamentally, I can't deal with the machine. He's not a valid dealer. Because he's not an accountable person. It's not a sane, pubescent person, this dealer, this machine, I mean. This machine is not a sane, pubescent person, so how can I deal with this one? So, I asked, is it the case that, Yanni, when it comes to getting the advantage... How do I quantify that I'm getting the advantage so that I can take the Hanafi school here? The Hanafis who said that you can deal with the Kafir in the Kafir country as he deals, as long as the advantage is yours. So I said, okay, if I wash my clothes by hand, I'll save my money, but I'm, that's going to take a lot of time and effort. And I feel like that's a loss for me to use that time there. And if I hire someone, then that's going to be a lot more money. The cheapest thing for me to do is to go to the laundromat and put my clothes in the machine and put the money in the machine without dealing with any human. Is this what the Hanafis meant by getting the advantage? You have an advantage here? So I asked Hajri Yad about that. He said, yes, your understanding is correct.
Um, so I just want to remind you here, since we're talking about the dealer. Last week, we talked about who can't deal, who's restricted. Now we're going to talk about who has authority, not just authority to deal. I don't mean like he's authorized. As the title suggests here, officers, guardians, and masters. Officer here means like, we're talking religiously, Islamically. The Muslim judge could put someone in charge of something, in charge of you, or in charge of some issue. So then he's going to be like an officer. And the judge is an officer, actually. The judge is an officer. And the caliph, he's an officer. So the author says here, the guardian considers the market price. That means he's this guardian or this officer or master. So all of these are almost the same thing, except any details we'll see where they're different. This person, he's dealing with someone else's money. And he's dealing on someone else's behalf. So we're starting here. Since he's dealing with someone else's money and on someone else's behalf, then he must consider the market price. For yourself, you don't have to consider the market price. But when you deal for someone else, you do. Even if you're not an officer, if you're just an authorized person only. Just if I said, uh, Brother Abdul Salam, take care of this for me. Then you're just an authorized person now. Uh, but you still have to observe the market price since you're working on someone else's behalf. Including the case of collateral. Including the case of collateral. You have to keep market price in mind. What does that mean? Meaning, someone put up collateral. And now, so how does the collateral work? Okay, putting it up against the debt. We repeated that so many times. That's what the collateral is. You put an object up against the debt, not a debt against the debt and not an object against an object. You put an object up against the debt and the debt could even be work. Doesn't have to be money. And then, okay, so what if this person cannot fulfill his debt? Then this object gets sold. So now you're the guardian and you need to sell this object so that the collateral, so that this person can get paid. Something was put up for collateral, the, the debt was never fulfilled, and now this person wants his money. And there was a collateral involved. So what you're going to do, you're going to sell that item. So you need to observe the market price. Then what do you do? You sell that item, you give the person his money, and you give the change to the original owner. If there's any change left, give it to him. And the guardian has to manage the belongings in a suitable way. Yani, he has to manage the belongings in a suitable way. That's really an important statement because you see how open that is, right? How open to interpretation that could be in a suitable way. What does that mean? It means that he has to make the right decisions, the best decisions. He has to do what's best. That's what it means. In a suitable way, he has to be responsible for this other person's money. Like hiring someone to tend to the child's trees for the child's interests. Yani, you're in charge of a child's money. This child has land. It's not your land, but you're in charge of this money. Let's say your child got an inheritance. Now it's their money, not yours. Your child, their money. But they can't take care of the money, so you're in charge of the money. You're in charge of the money. So what you're going to do, this child has land. You're just going to let it grow wild? So it's not mine. I don't have anything to do with this. When he gets older, he can figure it out. Once he reaches puberty, he can go dig the weeds out. No. 
you're going to take care of this child's money. You're going to be dealing with it appropriately and, and, and uh, reasonably, uh, et cetera, maturely, et cetera. So what are you going to do, for example? You're going to hire someone to tend to the trees in this child's land with the child's money, that is. You're going to manage this money. So that's for the child's interest, but since you're in charge of that money, then you need to take care of it. Therefore, he spends on the child from his own money only what the child needs. Yani, from the child's money. His own money means the child's money. He spends on the child from the child's money only what the child needs. And I'll remind you here too. Who's obligated to take care of the non-pubescent child, the prepubescent child? Who's obligated to take care of the prepubescent child? The father, that's the original guardian. With whose money, Yanni? With his money, the, the father. Except when, when the child has money. You as the father, Yanni, if you're a man, you as the father, you have to pay for that prepubescent child from your money unless the child has his own money. If the child has his own money, then you are allowed to spend that child's money on the child. If the child has his own money, then if you spend your money on that child, then you can make the intention of a charity because you have the option of spending the child's money on the child. Uh, so, and if you do spend the child's money on the child, then what you're going to do, you're going to spend only what the child needs. You're going to manage that money very well. And the guardian accepts gifts on the child's behalf because this prepubescent child can't deal. So since this prepubescent child cannot deal, then... Who's going to accept the gift when someone comes and says uh, to that child, here, you want this? You want this lollipop or something or this toy? So that's not valid to do it in, directly with the child, prepubescent child, according to a Shafiri. So then who's going to do it? The guardian's going to do it. The guardian can say, yes, you can give it to him. And that's valid. Or the guardian say, give it to me, I'll give it to him. So he gives it to the guardian. And it's for the child, not for the guardian. It's not the guardian's money. No. If a guardian has control of two separate monies, now here's a detailed case. Someone has control of two separate monies. <laughs> no, we're talking in general here. You have control of a child's money. You have control of a child's money, whether it was inheritance or whatever it was, Yanni. A gift. Someone gave your child a gift of money. Now, if that's a prepubescent child, then you're going to be in charge of that. Okay. To give something to the child. Huh? Yeah, to give something to the child. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So then somebody might ask, just to make this clear here, because someone might say, all right, well, you know how we do, let's say, Eid, and we have gifts for the kids and stuff. And so does that mean we have to check with the parents? So no, not necessarily. It's going to be known. They're going to say, we have gifts for the kids. So then you're going to let your kid go there. So that's it's easy. Please.
so now we want to talk about a case of a person who has control of two people's monies. He has control of two separate monies. If a guardian has control of two separate monies, someone else's money besides that of his ward's money, like he has an employer. He, he works for someone and he has control of his money, this one he works for. And that other one has what his ward needs. So he's a middleman. Someone has control of two monies. This is our scenario. Someone has control of two monies. Let's say the money of his boss and the money of his child. And his child needs what the boss has. So how does he do this contract here? So someone else's money besides his ward's money and that other one has what his ward needs. So the, the other one, the boss in, the, in this scenario, he has to accept dealing with the money of the child. So that means the guardian is going to go to his boss and say, uh, I need to do a contract for this child with your money. And why is that important? Because it might be he doesn't want to deal with the child. Why not? What's the problem? Problem is if something goes wrong. The problem is if something goes wrong, he's going to have to wait for this child to reach puberty. So he's going to uh, tell his boss that he needs to use his money, the boss's money, Yanni, to, yeah, for this child. So he has to accept dealing with the money of this child, this boss. And then the guardian authorizes someone to buy on behalf of the child, excuse me, and sells to him. The, art, the, the guardian will then authorize someone to buy on behalf of the child. And then he sells to that one. This is so to get out of selling to himself and buying from himself. So he has charge of two monies. He wants to take one of these two sides. So which side is going to take? He's going to take the boss's side, for example. So he says, boss, I need to do such and such. The boss says, fine. So now he's going to work for the boss here in this deal. Now he's the boss's representative. So who's going to represent the child then? If he's not representing the child, then he's going to authorize someone to, set, to buy for the child. And then that authorized person is going to do that. And then he does the deal with that person. And then it will become the child's money. Whatever was belonging to the boss will start belonging to the child now. He may also return his wife's, his ward's wife to the marriage. Hold on a second. There's a detail here. Let me see this. Notes. واعتبار الصيغة جار حتى في بيع متولي الطرفين كبيع ماله من طفله. Uh, what if it's his own money though, not his boss's money? His money. He wants to sell what he has to the child. He's in charge of the child's money. He has his own money. And he wants to sell what he has to the child. How does he do that? Uh, we'll come back to that. Let me review it. Just be sure so I don't give you a weak answer or talk uh, without confidence. Now, also, the guardian, he has the power to return his ward's wife to the marriage. So, for example, your son was married. Then he divorced his wife. And she starts her idda. And then he went crazy. And then he became your ward since he's crazy now. Now you're in charge of him and his money. So now being his guardian, you can bring his wife back for him. So you're going to say, I reinstate Fulana as my son's wife, for example.
if a person is financially restricted because of irresponsibility after puberty, if a person is financially restricted because of irresponsibility after puberty, uh, we talked about that last week, so I'll recap for you. You have two cases here. Either the child reaches puberty irresponsible or not. If the child reaches puberty irresponsible, then he's going to stay restricted. Because, you know, the child is restricted for being prepubescent in the first place. In Shafiri school. So he's restricted just for not having reached puberty yet. But if he reached puberty irresponsible, he's going to stay restricted and you're going to maintain control of his money. But if he reaches puberty responsibly, which some said that means religiously responsible, so that means he prays and he fasts, and some said it means fiscally responsible, so that means he doesn't squander his money. If he reaches puberty responsible, then his restriction from childhood is lifted. His childhood restriction is lifted, and he's now able to deal with his money without restriction. And he does not need a guardian to do a marriage contract. Okay. But if he reaches puberty irresponsible, and we gave the example of an arsonist, he reached puberty as an arsonist, so that's irresponsible, then he's going to stay restricted. Uh, and if he reached puberty responsible, he will, his restriction will be lifted and he won't get restricted for irresponsibility unless a Muslim judge restricts him. So we talked about that all last week. So we're saying here now, if a person is financially restricted because of irresponsibility after puberty, the judge becomes his guardian. Yani, the judge was the one who restricted him, who barred him. The judge becomes his guardian, the Muslim judge, that is. And this restricted one does not buy or sell or emancipate or grant gifts except with permission. Emancipate means he can't set a slave free because that's like spending money. And he can't grant gifts except with permission, this restricted one. 